I'm not a good title person, so never go by my YouTube titles because sometimes I'm hiding things in there that I don't want the AIs to find out on the titles. But this is a very important scripture, and then we're going to go into some things of how the enemy's gotten away with deceiving people and what his real assignment is going to be. He, let's look in Revelation here, chapter 20, right up before it, verse 20, and tw verse, chapter 19, verse 20, and the beast, we are living in a beast system, and we were born into this. This is not new. The beast is growing. His tentacles are growing. Uh, unfortunately, this is part of getting into the next world, <laughs> accepting Christ as our Savior and going to live in eternity. But the, beast w but the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet. There's coming a day when the Lord is going to do a, the last move. I wish he'd do it now. <laughs> but... This is, we have to follow his plan, not our own. That's why he's God and we are not. And the beast was taken and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles. Always be weary of people that are uh, in the church that are miracle workers. I've always, yeah. I was in a movement in the, the 80s, 90s, whatever, it was signs and wonders movement. And I look back now and I was like, all of those are false prophets. Detour. Uh, that wrought miracles before him in which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast. So we see here the, the deception for those that are going to receive the mark of the beast and then that worshiped the image. These both were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone. There's coming a day God's going to deal with the devil. I know a lot of us get angry and mad, but that's the Lord. The Lord is going to take care of him once and for all. And his plan is bigger than ours. And you're only going to get in trouble if you get mad and angry and take vengeance out on people in this world. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse. That's not encouraging either, is it? Which sword, I, I just thought we were all going to vanish, right? And, the, which, and which word proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. No, that's not where I want to go. I want to go into chapter 20. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit, and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, the old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan. One of his signs is the dragon, Satan, and bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him. And look at what it says here. That he should deceive the nations no more. So we see that he is deceiving the nations. He's the deceiver of the nations. The last couple of years, what we've gone through, we have gone through, a, it was just so eye-opening to see he's moving. The enemy is moving into the nations. <clears throat> and how does he deceive the whole world? So that means that there's a lot of deception going on now because he's the deceiver of the nations. When I went to church, we never talked about the devil. He was under our feet. He was bound. We never talked about him. He was defeated. Everybody lived in this false reality of, of health and wealth and prosperity. And we lived in church 24-7, basically. We never even had time to think about it, other than gossip about each other and fight each other. There are a lot of church splits and fights and you know a lot of this stuff, because a lot of this doctrine that was being taught was false. Didn't talk about how do you deny yourself and how you serve one another. But here it says the nations are going to be deceived. So to deceive means to lie, to mislead, and to distort the truth. So the enemy is lying, he's misleading, and he's distorting the truth. But the Bible says we can also deceive ourselves. We can be self-deceived. How can we be self-deceived? By avoiding the truth. Most can't handle the truth. And when you come out of these false movements and you try to speak truth, why are people so mad at you that you're telling them things they don't want to hear because they've been brainwashed? And we're going to find out some of the, the ways he does deceive the whole world. And let that sink in, that he, does, that he deceived the whole world. Mass deception, one of the things he uses is mass media. 
Think about this. Now, mass media, he's the prince of the power of the air. We're all influenced by what we see and what we hear. And we see and hear media every day. You can hardly get away from it. What are we talking about? Television. Back in the day, it was radio. Now we have the internet, music, magazines. I mean, talk about magazines telling girls how they should look. Now that's not so much now, I don't think, I don't know, but back, you had to measure up to these girls that, a lot of them aren't girls, I'll just tell you that. <laughs> with their silicone and with all these different things that, that have been, you know, th this, let me just say this as carefully as I can. Bringing this to our children is not new. The sodomites have never went away. The abominations and the talk, the, that's why I love the Old Testament, of what they did and how they sacrificed to their gods, Moloch and all these other, so many pagan gods. And they've always done it. And now it's coming out more in the open because so much has happened and they can get away with more. But don't think it's just happening with our children. Uh, in fact, let me just throw this out here because we were conditioned and we didn't even know it. Raymond Burr, you remember Perry Mason? He, he uh, let's just say, came out on Oprah with a bearded partner. That freaked a lot of people out back then. They were conditioning way back. If you look at some of the shows we're looking at older, it's conditioning. We're talking about deception. We're talking about conditioning people. Then we had uh, a real sex symbol for women was Rock Hudson. Some of you are too old for Rock Hudson. Some of you too young for Rock Hudson. <laughs> but uh, he explained what he was going through a few days before he died in 1985, and he died of AIDS. And this is how Hollywood has programmed, and this just a little bit. And you guys sent me some stuff about what they're doing in cartoons for children. It's always been through cartoons. Have a gay old time. Yeah, but do Flintstone. All this stuff. This stuff has been in sublimal, sublineal, whatever you want to call it. And yeah, and <laughs> that's it. <laughs> and it's been planting seeds. But now it's coming more and more. And this is how Hollywood programmed girls to forget about feeling attraction to the hardworking, uh, serious men, the farmers and all that. They wanted to have, I call them slop operas, soap operas. And they'd have these women fantasizing about these men. And they were just so sweet and they were so romantic. And what were they doing? They were creating a reality that wasn't real. So when their hardworking husband came home, well, it's just you. Because the women were watching TV all day and they were fantasizing. And the guys do the same thing. It's, it's, it's been a, a way to take people out of uh, reality. reality because the cabal loves to invert reality. That's their job is to invert reality. So in six generations since 1917, postmodern people lack the discernment to recognize real masculine and feminine. Yeah. And now... It's, it's, it's way here. <laughs> oh, let's keep talking here. So we see that we've been deceived in television. We've been deceived on radio. We see and hear. And we want to talk a lot about the mass media as a way of deception. Romans 12, 2 says, we are not to be conformed to this world. That means we're not to be fashioned after it. But when you go to church and they're worldly, you think that's God, and you think, well, this is, you know, everyone's kind of doing this, and this is okay, and, you know, have all these light shows in church, and just rock music, and, it, you know, we subtly have been deceived and didn't even know we were being deceived. We just thought we were really cool Christians. <laughs> and I'm not judging you for that. You do what you want. I'm just saying we got a little help being deceived yeah. by the churches. So... We've been putting this stuff before our eyes and our ears, and the result is we spend more time with lies than we do with truth. Most men fantasize. 
they spend more you know lies with their fantasy woman than their real wife and vice versa because then they got to face reality they'd rather just go off and dream about Marilyn Monroe or someone I pick old ones that are dead Good. <laughs> <laughs> safe so we're watching TV and we're being programmed you're being programmed what stuff you should wear, what's cool, what's not. Now it's what drugs you should take with the side effects. And you can't even hardly watch TV at night without these things, recalls going on. The last one I saw, they were recalling baby food for metal in it. It's like, how sad. Do you just put metal in there on purpose? I mean, we don't even want to go there right now. So anyway, um, and of course, Camp Lejeune. We don't want to forget that. <laughs> have, you, <laughs> have you heard that commercial yet? Over and over and over. But mass media is being made, of, made up of private... I can't talk yet. Help me talk, Lord. Mass media is made up of private corporations that publish or broadcast news for a national or a nationwide audience. They report political, economic, and social issues with a slant and bias. And I knew some journalists, and I was studying years ago about journalists could not report what they wanted to report. They got fired. If they reported a different slant or what they saw. So don't think we haven't been controlled. Television emerged as a mass medium. Think of the word me medium and think of the word program programming during the 50s just in time to help fuel early Cold War hysteria the battle between truth and deceit remember this is the enemy's job he wants to let's turn to John John 8 this is a good description of him while I'm turning there I'm just going to go we are called to walk in truth and to speak the truth this is a challenge when we're faced with misinformation, partial truths, and deception. It's hard to know what truth is. And then when I started thinking I was on the right road and I started listening to what I thought were truth tellers, I found out about controlled opposition. What does that mean? They're on the same side. Yeah. They're different sides of the same coin. They'll tell you 90% truth, but then they've got an agenda to push you in, which candidate you should, you should definitely be following. And, and remember, we had a president that died that said, we'll no longer be um, having elections with just the people's vote, but they will be selected. So why all the emphasis on it's your vote, it's your, I don't know, just throwing it out there. Number one, let's look at John 8, let's look at this one in verse 37. I know that you are Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me because my word hath no place in you. Kind of brought to me the Abrahamic Accord. I speak that I have seen with my father, and you do that which you have seen with your father. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said unto them, if you were of Abraham's children, we would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Abraham didn't do this. Now in verse 42, Jesus said unto them, he's talking to these religious people, and he's always had trouble with religious people, and, and the war goes on today. Jesus said unto them, if God were your father, you would love me, for I proceed forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech, even because you cannot hear my word? You are of the father, the devil and the lusts of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. So when we think of the national worldwide deception, we're seeing lies. We're seeing that this is what he's gonna do till he's locked up. He's going to try to deceive, and that's why Jesus said, let no man deceive you. Let no man deceive. Don't put all your trust in an organization. 
Don't put your trust in a man or a woman. Put your, keep your trust in the Lord. And this is hard because we've been taught to worship some of these, well, Hollywood stars and then preachers, the celebrities, preachers, that none of that is the Lord. He wants us to, to worship him, right? So Romans 1.25, deception separates us from God. God is the truth, and when we get deceived, we get pulled away from the truth. That's why I don't like these false movements, because they get you away from the Lord, and they get you to have faith in your own faith, faith in your own words. Rather than trusting in God's word, it's subtly, deceivingly pulling you away from the Lord and getting you into Gnosticism, special revelation knowledge. It says here, they exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator. So when we get on some truth and then we get deceived, we take a detour. I've taken a lot of detours. I don't know about you. I thought I was on the right road and then I found out I was on a detour. But a good thing about a detour, you can get back. So we've all, a lot of us have taken detours, but we can get back on that narrow path and just say, you know, we aren't supposed to be famous. We're not supposed to seek all that stuff. We're supposed to follow the Lord, do what he tells us to do, and enjoy our freedom in the Lord because the enemy wants to take that away. He's a controller, a manipulator, a liar, and a murderer, and a deceiver. And the battle is going to be whom you're going to serve and who you're going to follow. And then when you start seeing things, you wonder why other people don't want to hear it because they're in the matrix. They're in the, the false reality and they're in that system. So when you come out of that system, they don't hear you. They're programmed. They've been brainwashed like we were, watching and following the newsman, just like he's part of our family. We're gonna sit down to whatever his name is and we're just, he's, he's telling us the truth. And how sad when you look to people that you think are telling you the truth, but they're really not telling you truth. That's the enemy's job, that's his assignment. Second Peter 2, two through three, the false teachers use false words and greed to exploit you. Now how many people bought houses they were not supposed to buy, but they were impressing everybody in church and because they wanted to have, show everyone how much faith they had. That doesn't mean you have faith if you have a great house or car. If you drove a bad car back in the movement, you didn't have any faith. There's something wrong with you. Don't you throw that. Pastor would say, don't you bring that thing into our parking lot. That's sad. That's shaming. That's so deceptive. So this is how they exploit you. They manipulate you and deceive you into thinking they're giving you all this spiritual truth and you got to give all your money to them. That's exploitation. On this earth, we're going to have to deal with deception every single day of our life. Do you realize that? That's his job, Revelations tells us that he's deceived the whole world. There's going to be a time where he's not. But right now, he's deceiving people. So we cling to what the Bible says, to what Jesus says. That's our truth. That's our life. I don't go to the news, all those places to get truth. I know truth. Our truth is here. And that's why the enemy is so threatened. He wants to change all these Bibles. He wants to change them. So you get confused. We're to be on guard. We've talked a lot about that. I'm not going to go into Ephesians 4, 14 through 15, Colossians 2, 8. We are not to be a slave to this world system. In fact, we're supposed to come out of it if we can. Because as things start shaking, the harder and more connected we are to the beast system, the, the harder it's going to be because we're coming through some famine and some hard times, which nobody's ever prepared us for. We were just told that we were on top and rising. Yeah. And we're highly favored and blessed. Yeah. Best life now. yeah, the best life, live your best life now, right? Well, what about uh, what's going on with people? I have never seen so many discouraged people. One of my friends just committed suicide this week, which is even hard to talk about. But this, this world is, is not what it appears to be. And Jesus told us that. He told us that the enemy is out to steal, kill, and to destroy. But I've come that you might have life and you have it more abundantly. And I was telling my granddaughter, because she was sad she couldn't come over and see me because she's not feeling well. I said, you've got to keep your joy level up. Because the devil doesn't have joy. 
He's jealous when you get joy and you get full of joy and you're happy. He doesn't like that because he doesn't have any joy. Think about that. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. It's not an outward thing, but it's an inward. It's an inward uh, walking and living and walking with him. And even though our circumstances look bad, we know we have hope. People in the world and even the church now are thinking they have no hope. They're very, very discouraged. So the most dangerous sources of information can come from people we trust. We thought we trusted. The news media, preachers, politicians, the white coat doctors, the scientists. They've got to be right, right? Think about it. Some people serve the Lord. Some people serve the devil. Or they just don't. Some are deceived in the middle. But there are a whole group of Luciferians now that are running a lot of different things, and it took me a long time to get my head wrapped around that. I couldn't believe anyone would do that. But now they're coming out with their signs and their symbols. And I've talked to this about you, to you before, about their signs and symbols. Dr. Kathy Burns, I'm not even going to say this because I might get censored now, but she kind of goes through very simplicity, simply, the symbols. By their fruits, you're going to know people. And by the occult and the dark side, by their symbols, because they wanted other people to see who they were by their symbols. Because they're, they're going to tell you their symbols, and, and if you know that symbol, you'll like, okay, you know. And people that are naive, like most of us have been our whole life, that just believe the best of everything, we just, don't, we just think it's just an icon. Yeah. It's just, it's, but then when you, you see people that have come out of these movements and they expose these symbols... And they really tell you what they are. The one I just wanted to share with you now is because it's happening. It's coming out more and more. The Baphomet. Yep. People don't even know what that is. It's, let me see how she s describes it here. Um, it's a certain god. It's a symbol. But the god of, it's called the god of Mendes, of the embodiment of Lucifer as God. It's a pentagram enclosed within the circle. It's a sign for the god and goddesses. And they believe when they show these symbols that they get power from those gods and goddesses. So they're showing more and more symbolism now, just even on some of the commercials. It's like, wow, they're, just, they're not hiding anything anymore. They're just coming right out with it. But it's, um, it's got the, the woman on the top and the male on the bottom, they, they're all enclosed in one person. It's called the Baphomet. And this is part of what's going on with the movement of what they want people to be transitioned. Yep. I'm not going to go, but it's also, if you really want a good study, study androgyny. That's right. Androgyny, it means both male and female are in one and this is the picture of it. I don't know if you can get that. I don't want to give too much attention to that. But when you start seeing it showing up with some of these guys that are promoting free speech, and they wear it in the Halloween stuff, I don't know if you guys saw that. Don't trust these puppet heads. Because <laughs> they're telling you that you're going to have free speech if you follow this guy. And after a lot of the research I've been doing, they're going to lead you to these apps yes. that are going to control yep. your, your social scores. This is all coming with the new artificial intelligence. And don't be just following the crowd. The devil is a deceiver, and he uses people that look famous. And why would you even want to follow that? And the other person that was real big uh, dressed up in this party as a worm. Like, what's that all about? I mean, really? We're going, you know, okay, let's glorify these weird things. But this has been going on a long time, but now they're bringing it out in the open. That's the thing I want you to see. Just because you don't believe in it doesn't mean it's not there. It's just that no one's taught you. Nobody's taken the time to unveil and say, this is how the enemy works. He's trying to deceive us. So the most dangerous sources of information can come from people we trust. Well, they wouldn't. What are you, how, if they're, how do you know if they're not deceived? And that's part of it. Some will say, well, are they purposely doing this? Are they not? I leave that to the Lord. I judge by the fruits, by the fruits. 
What are they promoting? What are they teaching? Do they really love people or is this this false love now that we all have to, you know, unite? That's another deception. <clears throat> Setting the agenda. People within the news establishment determine what information we see and hear. And I don't know, there was an old movie that said Tomorrow's News, wasn't it? One of those old movies we watched and they would tell everybody what was going to happen because they made, made it happen. And they said, whoever controls the news controls the world. So that's how the enemy works. We are to be on guard and for agenda-driven reporting. What's the agenda? What are they pushing? What do they want to get in your body this time? They want the temple. We are the temple of the Holy Ghost and the devil doesn't want you to walk in health and all that stuff. He wants to put as much stuff as he, he can in us. The narrative, what is a narrative? There is a narrative, and if you come against the narrative, you'll be censored. And I have been for a long time. The narrative, and how you can tell, after the first 72 hours, you, we get a lot of views. As soon as that 72-hour mark, it's just nothing. Things don't move. It's because I've been exposing this for a long time. And I just said, people have told me to stop, and I don't do a lot. I mean, I just try to spoon feed people. <laughs> because, I mean, this is hard for some people to handle. But I said, this is, somebody's got to do it. We've got to let people know that the enemy is a deceiver and he's working in all these areas. So they have a narrative, and what's the narrative? It's ordered series of events, whether they're true or not. There is a narrative that, it, that everyone's following, a script they're following. I'm talking about the enemy side. And even in some of these great corporations or these bad ones, there's good people. There's good people everywhere. There's good deceived people everywhere, just like, you know, at times we were. Hopefully, you know, we, and you say, well, why do you even do this? Because I want to study what the enemy's going to do next. We've come through a lot of deceptions. A lot of us bypassed this last one because we studied. Other people just fell right into these traps. Yeah. What's the next deception? God says we're supposed to be aware, watch. This is something as Christians we're supposed to do. We're supposed to... Jesus didn't hide it. He just said, this is the Father. He's going to steal, kill, and destroy. He's going to murder people. What do they do in some of these events? They dedicate these events, these climate things that are happening, to their gods. And I looked up one of their gods, and we were listening to this guy. said, you know what that god represents? They say it's just this and that. What was it? I forgot. Tapestry and something else. But he said, really, it's about sacrificing. It's a human sacrifice. So what are these people doing? They want to depopulate the earth. Oh, I can't believe that. Well, you can't handle truth. Some people, you, you can't handle the truth. If you're living with more lies, and it takes a long time. We were talking to someone today about something. I, I, I don't want to believe that's depressing. <laughs> it is depressing. Yeah. I cried when I started seeing some of this stuff. I... And then I felt responsible, once you know truth, you have to tell it. I have to stand before God and say, I, I did the best I could to tell truth. Do you miss it now and then? Do you do stuff? Yeah, but not willfully. You're not willfully being bought out, paid for to deceive people, right. you know? And I believe there's a lot of good people out there that if they were given the truth, they would, they would run and follow it, but they just don't know, they don't know where to find it. So the narrative, it's ordered series of events, whether true or not. And this is where God, we pray for discernment when they start putting all these things in front. Is this really an event? Did this really happen? Or is this national news to deceive people? Remember, that's the devil's job is to deceive not just America. He's here to deceive the nations. And now that we've got all this, you nations coming together, we got to know what's happening. We need discernment and ask God, what is the truth? Are they lying to me? I can't stand lying. I don't know if, if your kids ever lied to you. It's like, that's, don't lie to me. And that's why I loved getting all my prostitute friends. I got a lot of them saved because they would tell me the truth. I fell, I did this, and I go, okay, well, we'll help you get back. But they weren't religious. They, were, they would tell you when they really sinned and they'd want back up. You can help people like that, yeah. but you can't help it if they're going to lie. Cover up, you know. Deception may create detours in our lives, but the truth will always be truth and will win in the end. Regardless of what's going on in the world, God's going to win in the end. That's why we have to endure. 
endure hardness. We're see I'm seeing more people die right now than I've ever. My favorite drummer and my favorite guitar player. Within a couple months, it's just like, wow. One was an act, well, they were both accidents, but it was, it's very sad. George Orwell, in his book, he said, the people will, will believe what the media tells them. They believe. And what we have to say is when we're watching TV and they're pushing this stuff, we have to say, not my reality. This is my reality. Yeah, Truth is my reality. I have to deal with lies every day. And pray for people to be in your life that want truth. The mass media no longer pretends to be truthful, objective, or to give both sides. They aren't even pretending anymore. It's a double-speak medium to give planned messages. What to think, what to worry about, what to laugh at, and what to be scared of. And as I knew some of these things that were going on the last couple years, I just said, this is fear porn. This is fear porn. This is fear porn. They're trying to get everybody afraid. They tell you what, this is happening now. How do you know? Were you there? We trust the news. This is the good news, right? So they tell us what to think about, what to worry about, what to laugh at, what to be scared of. We trust the newscasters as part of our family. Well, let's turn on Ted tonight. What's Ted got to tell us? And I'm closing with this. People think the TV will never lie to them. It's on the news. If it's on the news, it has to be true. People's lives are shaped and opinions are given to them. Information is power. Who controls information controls the people who listen to it. Most people are robots and repeat what's on the news. They parrot the information. They are not able to reason or think for themselves. This is what they said. Well, this is happening now. And there's some news we have to pay attention to. I'm not saying we don't, but I'm just saying the narratives, the agendas. And I've shared before on what Agenda 21 is and the 17 Sustainable Goals. You need to know those as hard as they are to look at because you'll see they're implementing some of them now, the Sustainable Goals. It's about control of the masses, just like the, the Bible tells us. He's going to deceive the nation, the masses, a weapon of mass distraction. You want to get a husband and wife divided? Just put sports on all day. Well, some women like sports. But this is how American men, most men, they know more about sports and who's playing than they do any Bible verse. They don't know any Bible verse, but they know who this guy is. It's a, ma a weapon of mass distraction, deception, and destruction. How women should look. Well, your wife doesn't look like that, she, you know. And then she's struggling, struggling, and she doesn't realize these women on TV are not who you think they are. And the men aren't either. They're silicone implanted. Even the muscle, I mean, the stuff I've learned, I wouldn't even want to tell you. This is just a tip. Don't compare yourself to these men and women on TV. They want to make you unhappy with yourself. They want you to hate yourself, not to love how God made you. You got to change it. You can't look the way you look. You got to change it. You got to change it. You got to wear this. You got to buy this. You got to do this and this. Well, maybe then I'll be okay. If I have the latest this, maybe this will make me feel better about myself. It's all mass conditioning. And lastly, many people would rather not know about the major manipulations happening in our world believing that it's better to focus only on the positive. You got to have a good attitude, and we are to have a good attitude, but not to the point of you don't face reality. You don't face truth. They choose to avoid looking in the shadows. Yet would you ignore a friend who was about to harm someone or commit suicide? As long as we collectively choose ignorance over awareness, these manipulations will continue. We can't stop them, but we can be aware of them. The next planned attack, you don't have to be afraid of. You can say, okay, what's the enemy trying to do now? What fear porn is he throwing my way? Lord, you show me what the truth is. Is there truth in this? Sometimes there's truth in some of it. And a lot of it is just manufactured lies. 
And then they want you to pick a side. One side says this and the other side says that just so you can fight. Let's just divide and conquer everybody. They're easy to control and manipulate when you fight and conquer them. The people are kept in a state of fear and insecurity. They use for your safety. Everything's for your safety. I learned that when Hitler said it. I said, oh, they're pulling that thing out again. Everything's for your safety, for your safety. They use for safety and then national security. Yep. As tools to maintain and increase their hold on people. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that your word says the enemy's come to steal, kill, destroy. He's come to deceive us. And you said you are the savior. You never lie. You never deceive us. You never manipulate. You expose who the enemy is. Help us see who the enemy is. It's really not people. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. And there's many people that are demon possessed today. They're doing the work of their father. And there's many people in the Lord, they're doing the work of their father. And, the, and we know that they're gonna call evil good and good evil. And we know persecution is coming for those that are trying to walk in the light. But you've prepared us for it. You've told us it was coming, so we will not be afraid. You told us so many times, you've not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound, sound mind. I just pray for those that are alone. Send them help, send them love. So many of us feel so alone, feel so isolated. What's happened in the last couple years Father, I thank you that you're a friend that sticks closer than a brother and you lead us and you guide us into truth and help us not be deceived in these end times. Again, as you said, let no man deceive you. We thank you for the truth in Jesus' name. And everyone said? Amen. If you would like to see more messages from Roberta on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to her YouTube channel, Roberta Morrison. Hit the bell button to be notified of new messages from her and be sure to check out her YouTube playlists for other messages that interest you. Go to the livinginhispresence.org website page and click on the messages button on the top center to go see her messages. There are free audio downloads of the messages available also. We are viewer supported on the main web page at the top right is a give button. Thank you for watching and see you next time.